Good evening, Illinois. Welcome to Muslims Collaborify. I am Rima Kamran, co-founder and executive director at the Illinois Muslim Civic Coalition, and I'm so excited to have you here this evening with us on Can TV 21. You can stream us online at cantv.org backslash hotline. The next 25 minutes, join us as we talk about building civic power through elected office. We're excited to have our special guest, Sadia Covert, on with us. Uh, she is a mover, shaker, an activist, and a civic influencer. And we're so excited to have her on board. And we're going to get started. Um, if you have questions for us uh, to talk about elected Muslim officials and building civic power through the office um, through uh, through office. Call us at six at three one two seven three eight one zero six zero. Let's jump right in. We I don't know if you knew this, but we have Illinois has over fifty five elected and appointed officials serving in a variety of different levels. Um, you can check out our screen and you can see that we have amazing um, folks serving in Cook County, DuPage County, um, DuPage and Will, Will County, Kane Lake, Champaign County, and Sangamon County. So we're really excited uh, to talk to Sadia. Sadia, you are a DuPage County board member. Yes, that's correct. You are managing partner and attorney at Covert and Covert. You chair the DuPage County Complete Count Committee. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself and what brought you to this work. Why elected office? Why did you run? And, and what was your passion? What brought you to, um, to building civic power through office? Uh, well, it's quite a long story, but I will shorten it for oh, you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, it all started, actually, uh, when I started uh, working on the uh, hate crime uh, legislation amendment a few years ago. Uh, when my, I have three kids, so I had my second at the time. She was about one and a half. And um, I started working on amending the hate crime law in Illinois as a layperson. I, you know, I'm an attorney, but I'm not a legislator. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't at that point. And when I started working on that uh, amendment, because I did notice there was an increase in hate crimes, um, that actually started my journey. Um, once that was in the process and I, and I had sponsors at the state level uh, to pass that bill, and it passed unanimously, uh, which I'm grateful for, and it became new law in Illinois. Um, I think that's what started my political the spark. journey. That was the spark okay. that started it all. And okay. that is when uh, I was approached to run for office. Okay. I was uh, approached to run for DuPage County Board. And I was uh, initially a little hesitant because I had my third child. Oh. And he wasn't even one. He oh, was a wow. newborn. He wasn't okay. even a year old at that point. So I had to put a lot of thought into it because I didn't just want to run and, you know, not put my 110% into it. So I eventually decided that I will run. I want to inspire others to run. And um, it may be tough, but we can manage this. And I think as a, as, a, as a woman, as a mother, I think it made me stronger. Okay. Well, let's drill down um, a little bit. So you talk about your passion and the spark being ignited. Mm -hmm. You've run, you, uh, you currently serve on the county board. Um, what is it about elected office? Um, you know, what is your priority? And then how do you feel like you're able to make a difference as an elected official versus a lay person versus someone who's a legislator? Um, tell us a little bit about your thoughts on that. I think it's really important to be a good example for the community. And my main priority in my district is to take care of everybody in my district. Uh, regardless of political affiliation uh, or age or race or gender, everybody who lives in my district are my constituents. And my first priority is to make sure that they are taken care of, mm -hmm. and I do that to the best of my ability. So when it comes to decisions that I have to make on the county board, I have to think of all my, you know, the diverse group mm -hmm. that I have within um, my constituent base and make sure that seniors, um, young children, 
uh, businesses, uh, even animals. Okay. <laughs> you know, I spoke out for animals at a county board meeting, and I said that they don't have any voices, so we have to be their voice. Right. So you have to be the best example th that you can be and stay true to yourself and true to your constituents and try to stick to your promises that you oh, made. <laughs> and that would be an important one. Yes. Making sure that you stick with what you said you would do. Exactly. Okay. Um, how is appointed office similar to and different from elected office? Um, two weeks ago, we had um, some appointed officials on, and they, again, spoke about their passion and why they do this work. Um, how is elected office, and uh, how is that different? Um, well, with appoint with appointed office, you're not running a campaign like right. you would in an elected office. And uh, there's a lot, a lot that goes into running a campaign in an election. Um, I had, you know, you have a primary election, then you have a general election, so you kind of have to have two, sometimes you have to have two rounds. Um, on our campaign, we worked for two years straight, okay. and it was a lot of work. You have to raise money. Um, you have to knock on the doors. You have to get to all these voters, where as an appointment, you're appointed uh, to the position that you're in, but you don't have to you know, necessarily knock on doors and campaign and raise money. So it sounds like the journey is, is very different getting to, to both of those and then obviously the responsibilities would be different as well. Yes. Um, so this has been a year uh, where we have diverse candidates running, women, you know, this has been, uh, I think last year was considered the year of the women where we had women of all um, races, ethnicities, ages running for office, which is wonderful and exciting. Um, so the question here is, what advice would you give someone who is thinking about running for office or who might be in the process of deciding if 2020 is the year or may have actually started the process as well? A wise person during my campaign had told me from the beginning, run like you're going to lose. Oh, that's run an interesting, like you're going to lose. That's interesting <laughs> advice. Tell us more. Run like you're going to lose. Um, I mean, it was just so self-explanatory. It just clicked. Um, run like you've never run before and, and, and that you're going to not win. So you give it all you got. You, you give it your 100%. And you don't leave any stone unturned when you run a campaign. Don't take anything for granted. I, I did everything. So when people ask me, what did you do that worked? I don't know. I did everything. <laughs> you did everything. <laughs> and, it, and I think we've been talking. You had support, you had support from mm -hmm. the community, mm -hmm. from your family, um, from your colleagues, which, which I think is another mm -hmm. big part of running, is have a system in yeah. place and have a strategy exactly. and run like you're going to lose. Mm -hmm. for that sure. was the best advice I've ever received. And I, I want to pass that along. To yeah, no, all that the is candidates. excellent. That is excellent <laughs> advice. You are watching Muslims Collaborify on CanTV21 and CanTV.org slash hotline. Today's discussion topic is building power, civic power through elected office. Our guest is Sadia Covert. Uh, give us a call if you'd like to join the conversation at 312-738-1060. Um, learn about, you know, advice, strategy, maybe some fun stories from the campaign trail uh, that uh, Sadia can share with us. Actually, that's a great that's a great segue into our civic reality. Tell us a little bit about. Tell us um, what are you most proud of? You know, you've been um, a part. You've been in office uh, for almost a year. Almost a year. Almost yes. a year. So um, what is something looking back that you're the most proud of? Like as you look back, you know, through this journey, obviously getting to office is, is a journey in itself. Right, right. Um, some things that you want to highlight for us. I think the, well, moving past the campaigning part where I, I won, you know, the, the, the election and that excitement that Mm -hmm. We all had as a community. There were I was so blessed to have so many people from the community that I didn't even know that came out to the inauguration, and they were so supportive and so excited. Um, I mean, I was bombarded on stage. I didn't even know who was who. It it took me an hour probably to get off the stage. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So people were very excited about that, and I saw that energy, and I was so proud of that. Um, once I was in office, my first day. Um, was 
you know, I remember going to Friday prayer before uh, my first day in office, and um, the sermon was about uh, being just and fair, mm. and that really resonated, and that really stuck with me, and um, making sure that you are moving forward when you run for office, making sure that you do not compromise your values. You have to have your principles and your values mm -hmm. with you. And that, I believe, is what helped me achieve uh, multiple resolutions that I got past my first year. Wow. So diversity and inclusion, co creating the com complete count committee, um, and uh, also, um, I'm missing a big one, which I can't remember right now. <laughs> It'll come to you. <laughs> It'll come to me. Um, but, you know, just having things getting past, you know, I believe I had three resolutions past my first year. That's great. And uh, humbled by the grace of God. And uh, I'm really proud of that. And it was because because I worked together with, with I reached across the aisle. I worked together with everybody. Great. When you go into office, it's kind of like a workplace. You have to work with everybody. And um, and you attract, what is, what is the proverb? Um, you attract more flies with honey, honey. than vinegar. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. yeah. So having this collective impact together uh, for the betterment of our community. Right. Um, so let's take a moment uh, to look at a Muslim voter um, engagement as well as what our civic reality looks like. On your screen, um, you know, research shows uh, from ISPU, latest research shows that um, if you have met or communicated via email, phone, or mail with your locally elected representative, you are prone to be uh, more civically engaged. And as you can see from our civic reality, uh, Muslims are one of the lowest um, communities that actually communicate uh, with their elected officials. Um, you know, here's on average, anyone, pretty much any group that contacts local officials are 25% more likely to vote in elections. Um, so talking a little bit about, um, about the reality of, um, of our civic reality, um, what do you, how do we change the narrative here? How do we change this idea of making sure that you're reaching out to elected officials? What is the advice that you would give to a community that is getting ready for 2019, 2020? And we're here, 2020 <laughs> is uh, four weeks away and yeah. we're going to be in a pretty important year for a lot of us yeah. um, with the census as well as, um, mm -hmm. as well as the elections that are coming up. Right. I think, I think people need to understand how the process works. Uh, we have a lot of people within um, the Muslim community as well and other communities as well where um, there may be um, a lot of immigrants coming from different countries or uh, people that are just not familiar with the process and the system and who their representative is, who their district is, they don't know. I think it starts with community centers. So if we could reach out to these community centers and get their cooperation and collaborate with them to educate um, all the members of a congregation or at the mosque or a community center, um, it's it's more likely that um, we'd, we'd have the opportunity to educate and they would know where to go to contact a representative, mm -hmm. what, what government does, what local government does. A lot of people don't even know what county board does, mm -hmm. you know, what local government does for us. So it's about education and connecting with these communities along with their community leaders and community centers to get this word out. Right, and and the and basically giving them specific action points to yes. say this is how you move the needle mm -hmm. for for work being done. Exactly. Um, another interesting. Um, oh, we have a caller. Let me. Um, so, hello, caller. Welcome to the show. Um, do you have a comment or a question? Yo. Yeah. Hi. Good evening. Yes. Uh, good evening. I have a question. Please, go ahead. Uh, last week I watched your show, and I congratulate you for that. It's very wonderful. I already called my, my niece, who is a, she's a Muslim in Florida. My question is, your coalition, do uh, you have a networking with uh, Florida, Muslim women in Florida or New York? 
If Thank you for that question. Similar. So, um, yeah, so we, we actually are based in Illinois, but there are many organizations that are in Florida and New York. I would advise um, you, uh, your niece or folks that are in Florida and New York to check out online. Uh, there are several coalitions that have been formed, um, and they are uh, organizations that help to um, have communities network with each other around civic engagement or around other projects. So check out out um, Facebook as well as the internet to find um, a coalition around you that will hopefully help you get civically engaged. Um, coming back much. to our conversation, um, Sadia, one of the other things that I uh, wanted to bring to your attention is a voter registration gap. So folks that actually register and will actually vote is really, really um, pronounced in Muslim young adults, 18 to 29, um, only 63% uh, they might have read more would have registered but only 63 percent end up voting compared to 85 percent in their general population um thoughts on how do we work with our community i know your uh, advice was specific to making sure that we are educating mm -hmm. um, our youth as well as our community through community centers mosques and other faith-based centers what are other uh, things that you would advise um, as folks are getting ready for 2020 uh, to focus on the youth? I think the most important, the fascinating thing about these numbers is we have them and we know how we got there. I would like to go a little deeper into this and to discover reasons why. Because if we could determine why, why is there a gap, then we can be more laser focused as to um, not fixing the problem, but helping, mm -hmm. helping the issue. Yeah. and. Um, you know, narrowing that gap a little bit more. Yeah. So um, thinking about thinking about folks that have actually been a part of uh, of conversations, I think some of it is apathy, some of it is miseducation, mm -hmm. and I think we were also talking about these ideas of you know an immigrant community. Perhaps mm -hmm. you know this is something that we were really not encouraged to do um, in our home countries, or even as young people. Right. Maybe as as we're growing into it and have yeah. young people of our own, right. it's something that we have to change the narrative on exactly and there's a we have to look at the cultural norms as well you know Muslims are from around the world so yeah. we have different people from different backgrounds um, coming in there's some people from countries where they don't vote yeah. you know their government is set up differently there are some people that come from countries where young people don't vote and only the older you know the, the elderly generation, or the yeah. older generation votes right and you know I've talked to kids who literally told me not kids they're young adults who are like, my parents don't want me to vote. You know, they think I should stay out of it. I don't want to get involved in politics. I'm not going into politics. I'm going to be a doctor. You know, it has nothing to do with it. Yeah. So I think the key here is educating <laughs> our community. Um, we have another caller. Wonderful. Uh, good evening, caller. Do you have a question or comment? Hi, yeah. So my husband is not a citizen, but we try to stay politically engaged in terms of, like, protests and writing letters to with elected officials and things like that. But now that the election season is coming up, he's been really wondering what things he can do to maybe support a candidate or voice his concerns, being that he can't actually vote. Great question. Uh, legally, I would say he can't donate. Okay. He can't make a political donation or contribution to a candidate because of his uh, legal status at the time. He's not a citizen. So a lot of people don't know this, but people who are not citizens, um, they cannot make a political contribution. I mean, it, it won't be accepted. Okay. Uh, so you have to be careful of that. But otherwise, um, there's a lot of different efforts that they can support, you know, uh, wearing a pin or mm -hmm. um, spreading the word and helping them with emails or yeah volunteer you know. volunteering for campaigns door yes. knocking there are various ways that folks can um, get engaged in the process um, I think another important thing that we should bring up is census 2020 and vote 2020 both important and essential parts of uh, civic engagement not uh, because the census specifically um, it doesn't matter if you are a citizen if you are a um, 
you know, if you are undocumented, if you are actually a green card holder, all and every every single person needs to be counted in the census. So, um, but I think in terms of supporting political candidates who are running or supporting the whole uh, getting out the vote um, opportunities, I think volunteering, um, helping spread the word within our communities, as well as uh, learning of other ways uh, that they can help support candidates um, is great. And I, I, we do commend uh, your husband for still wanting to be involved in the process. Um, so we were talking about uh, young people. We're talking about the older generation. Um, I, wanna, I want to start to laser focus, I like that word, <laughs> about what can the average person do to help? And how do you, how do you convince uh, a community that may, may be hesitant because they feel like their voices are not being heard? Um, how, do we, how do we get this encouragement uh, to our communities to say, getting out the vote is important, getting out the census is important, and making sure that you are involved in this civic engagement um, is important? Yeah. Their voices definitely matter because we, as a candidate, I was looking at, you know, who, who votes, you know, which communities vote, and um, where do I go, you know, when I knock on doors, and um, every vote matters, because I remember sitting there on election night looking at that bar move on the computer, and that was, that would determine my win, you know, mm -hmm. so every vote does matter, and it either makes it or breaks it for a candidate, a candidate that is going to work for you. So um, voice, their voice is matter. Your vote is your voice. And that's the message we have to get across. Absolutely. Uh, your vote is your voice. Every vote matters. And then also making sure that you can continue to stay engaged with the officials that you brought into right. office, exactly. right? And these include opportunities um, of calling your Congress uh, people calling your elected um, elected officials. Um, here are some great action steps, um, you know, uh, talking about how do we make sure what works. So direct mailings, canvassing and phone banks, emails and texts, and messaging um, communities about um, the importance of voting and getting out the message of what you were talking about specifically. How do we make sure that our communities understand that their voice matters and their voice is important? Um, we were talking again about um, census 2020. It's an important year. Um, the census is coming, April 1st, 2020. Mm -hmm. You are the chair of the DuPage County Complete Count Committee. Yes. It's an important committee. DuPage County is a large county. Yes. Um, what are some of the key things that you are focusing on as a Complete Count Committee as we're getting ready for census? Mm -hmm. um, and what have been your priorities? Okay, I love the word laser focus. So we're laser focusing <laughs> on the hard to count uh, populations, which are children, homeless, minorities, people with uh, language barriers, um, different um, communities, and uh, we are trying to, we have, we're proud to have a 35 member committee, and we have, our all our committee members are um, from different backgrounds, and each committee member has their expertise in going to these hard to count communities and building that trust and educating them. So for example, if, um, if I'm going into a South Asian community, I know how to speak Hindi and Urdu. So I would go there because the community would be comfortable with the way I look and mm -hmm. the way I speak, they could connect with me. And I comfort them and say, hey, we're gonna be counted, here's, uh, here's how it goes, there's, this is a procedure, and, um, and it's safe you know, and confidential. So that way, people build that trust and relationship with you. We try to send uh, Spanish-speaking people to the Hispanic communities, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. when people are familiarized, um, when you're sending people that look like the community, you know, they're more comfortable and they're more likely probably to, we're hoping that they're more likely to respond to yeah. the census question. And I know that that has been a, a focus for the uh, DuPage uh, yeah. County Complete Count Com Committee um, is making sure that diverse voices are at the table and a part of the conversation. Exactly. And we thank you for that. Um, so, 
As we come to the end of our program, I want to uh, thank our, our special guest, uh, Sadia. Thank you so much for joining us today and helping shed some light on how we can build power through uh, political office and running and being uh, and serving as elected officials. Um, I want to thank you again for joining us tonight. The Illinois Muslim Civic Coalition is excited um, to partner and amplify the social and civic efforts uh, towards an equitable America, and we're always excited to have guests like Sadia as well as others on our show. Um, we empower the voices of cultural and diverse Muslims and we want to make sure that we are reminding you to support your community, to collaborate, amplify, and build civic power. So this is Rima Kamran from the Illinois Muslim Civic Coalition signing off for the evening. Join us next week on Monday at 7.30 p.m. where we will be just digging deeper into uh, conversations about building civic power as a community and uh, looking forward to seeing you next Monday. Have a great evening and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.